Hello, martial arts fans. My name is Jerry Blank. I'd like to welcome you to Martial Arts in Malibu. Many of you have seen my show before where I interview some of the most famous martial artists right here on Malibu Beach. Today's a different type of show. I'm having a reunion with a good buddy of mine. Well, I've known him for about 20 years now, but he's not a famous martial artist. He has actually helped me in an exhibition one time in, in Hawaii with martial arts, but he is one of the most famous surfers in the world. We actually go way back. I met him when he was 12 years old on the East Coast surfing in the United States. I'd like to welcome to the show the famous surfer from Hawaii, Mark Fu. Thanks, Jerry. I guess I finally made it to the famous Malibu Beach Colony, and I never knew it would be this way, but I guess I've made it. Well, you surfed here before, right? Yeah, I surfed here, but, you know, I mean, this is the high roller end, though. No? Yeah, this is pretty nice. Um, like I said, me and Mark go way back. I actually met him. He had moved from Hawaii uh, when, you, when he was 12 years old, and I was about just a, maybe a couple years older, huh? And um, we were both really into surfing then, and uh, tell us a little bit about your experience. You actually moved to Washington, D.C. from Hawaii. I know you're pretty depressed about that. Yeah, well, you know, like you said, I had moved from Paradise, Hawaii, and I'd started surfing, and you know how it is if you're a surfer or the same if you're in the martial arts, you live for it, you know? So um, we moved there, right, and I couldn't surf. I was, I was too young to drive, and so I was really, really depressed. You know, I got to go down to the beach on, on the weekends and in the summertime, and it was like three hours away, and you guys were coming up from Florida, and, um, you know, you guys were coming up. We were the big hotshot surf stars in those days, and uh, so, you know, I was just a little grim and all starry-eyed around these guys. And uh, anyways, they sort of took a shine to me, and they kept took pity on me because I was really, really depressed. I mean, like I was su suicidal, you know, I was 13 years old, and just, I mean, my whole life was uh, in shambles. So, you know, you had, actually, one reason why I really wanted to do this show with you is because, you know, I've, I've sort of living my dreams and fulfilled a lot of the things that I, I've always wanted to with my surfing career, and um, I feel that you have had a, a big part of my surfing career because, you know, you helped me to continue surfing by uh, those summers up on the East Coast, and then talking me to come down to Florida and, and talking my parents and letting me move out of my house when I was like 14 years old to go to Florida so I could surf year round with Jerry. And that helped me to continue surfing. It got me into more competitive surfing. Um, actually, I, I got my first uh, exposure in magazines when I was down there in Pensacola, Florida with you. So, um, I mean, I guess I could say if it wasn't for you, I, I wouldn't be where I am there today. Well, I don't know about that. From the very minute I met this guy, he was like really hot surfer. I knew that he had potential, and he's also smart. He knows how to, to work the angle in there, too. And he's a really good uh, representative for the uh, surfing community. But like he said, he, he actually for three years lived over on the East Coast. He moved back to Hawaii, and then the next thing I know, I'm seeing him on the cover of all the magazines. And many of you surfers know who he is because he actually does the, uh, the Wave Watch on location from Hawaii. He also uh, has a radio show there. He writes articles for uh, Surfer Magazine. He was just in the movie The North Shore. But what I can't believe is this guy, over the last two years, has been riding Wamea Bay. He actually got second uh, in the last contest they had there, the Eddie Akau, in the big wave. And that was over 20-foot waves, right? Yeah, well, it was um, you know, over 20 feet, 20 feet what we call in Hawaii. Um, actually, the result of that was a, was a tie for first, and they went to a, a tiebreaker, and then, you know, they kind of went to the sentimental favor. But that's okay. They're, they're going to have another one, and this year, um, you know, on the top seed, and, you know, the prize money is like $60,000 for first, so I'm, I'm much better off. You know, the chance of winning it two years in a row are a lot slimmer than winning it once, so now I, it's my turn. Well, what I can't believe is I went, like I said, got more into the martial arts, he got more into surfing, but I can't comprehend this guy riding these big ways. But anyway, also, as I mentioned, is a writing now for, uh, I think, a newspaper over there and also for Surfer Magazine. Tell us about this trip you got planned to Peru. You're going down there to do an article and surf, too, in the big ways in Peru, right? Yeah, well, I always try to mix, you know, I mean, my life is surfing, so um, whatever I try to do, I, but at the same time, I, it's my, also my, my career and my job, so I, whenever I do go surfing, I have to. Uh, earn my keep from my, you know, my sponsors and my endorsements. So we're going to Peru. Um, we we'll be writing some more stories. We went last year and we did a couple of real successful stories for Surfer Magazine. We discovered some new, you know, big wave spots and, and big wave surfing is, right now is really um, back in the forefront. It was sort of forgotten for a while, right. um, it's like a lost art sort of thing, you know. And now it's it's becoming really uh, uh, big again in the eyes of the media and the public. So we're going to go back down there and explore because Peru has got. Uh, besides the North Shore of Oahu, where I live, uh, probably the biggest surfable waves in the world. So, and now, you know, what I'm trying to do is make it like an endless winter, you know. It was, uh, they always said it was endless summer, but the best waves are in right. winter, so. Endless, sim endless winter is what we're after, so it's time for the big wave season down there. But, you know, to justify it all, uh, we got to, you know, get our publicity and get our exposure because that's what, you know, they pay us to do, so. But it's all just an excuse to go on a surf trip, basically. 
Well, that's great. Well, at, we talked about um, he uh, also got second place in the Idiot Cow. We're going to show a little uh, clip of that of some of these big waves he's riding. This was actually shown on uh, ESPN a couple years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's also video available on home video. But it's you know the next iCow um, is it has become the 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 biggest, the richest tournament in the world, and there's, you know, there's a lot of them. There's the, the PSAA, which they have here, and the ASP Tour, but it's, uh, you know, like $50,000 first place, which was postponed this year, so now the, the prize is in excess of that first place, which is the, the richest purse ever, and um, it's, you know, fortunately, it's for, I mean, that's where my, my front yard, so I'm at a big advantage there, but uh, there's some other things I want to say, <laughs> but, oh, okay, you know, after all this build up, I'm tired of talking about myself, but a lot of the people that watch this show probably don't know that Jerry here, besides being an excellent surfer, was uh, uh, a retired world kickboxing champion. Two times, huh? Is that right? I mean, I never see you mentioned on, on the shows I saw, so, I mean, you know, and, it, and, you know, I know it's kind of a weird angle for me to be on the show as a surfer, except for the fact that, of our friendship, but um, I've always felt that uh, that what I I've always been sort of you know was, I've never trained a lot but I've had a little bit of training and but I had a lot of close friends such as yourself where it's naturally rubbed off on me but um, you know surfing and martial arts are real similar in that they're real um, you know it's not just a recreation or a sport or a hobby and if you're into it you know it's a way of living it's your lifestyle you know it's it's a way of thinking you 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 know you live it you don't just do it right. In that respect, they're real similar. Also, in that they're real, um, sort of, they're real athletic, but at the same time, it's real, it's something very artful, and um, yeah, it's, like it's yeah, it's real inner and it's real mental. And so, you know, to, to me, the, when I compare surfing, that's the sport that I parallel it with the most. You know, I mean, the, the lifestyle and more, you know, the sensations maybe somewhere in skiing and stuff, but even a lot of the physical stuff. You know, like the the, the stances and the balance distribution and things like that are and uh, centers of gravity and how you use all those sort of things are, are real similar to uh, in both sports and you know the only reason I haven't gotten really heavily into it is because I can't I feel you can't really super excel at one thing unless you you really dedicate yourself to it so you got to make choices somewhere just like you did with right. with between surfing and, and martial arts well you know why I did that because down in Florida the surf's flat so much down in Hawaii you actually surf out there you don't have any energy to do anything else but uh, speaking of uh, talking about the competition, we're going to show a little bit of the Akau uh, right now. And also, uh, like I mentioned, Mark's in the movie The North Shore. Now, I don't know if he liked it too much. I haven't asked him. But I sort of liked the movie. To me, it was like a karate kid of surfing type movie. And I like to plug it. And he actually, you had actually a starring role as yourself in the movie, right? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, you know, it's you know how good, it's good money. I mean, all that kind of work is real good money. But, you know, the, the beauty of it is we're getting paid to surf. Um, and use your name, actually. Yeah, well, you know, I don't, you're not, you're not, it's pretty easy to be yourself. And uh, actually, in, with that movie, I had a, a role as a technical advisor. I helped them stage that, that competition, if you saw it, the Pipeline right. Classic, which was, and, you know, I helped the director a lot on those logistics because he wasn't that sharp on, you know, the, on the surfing and, and the runnings of a contest and stuff. So, in that respect, I did do a lot of behind-the-scenes work also. But, you know, I... It, you know, the, the goal of it isn't to, to do movies or to, to do television series or uh, to be in the magazines. It's the goal of it for me is to, um, because I love surfing and I want to, you know, present the sport in a positive light and publicize the surfers and, and see them get the credit that they deserve uh, just because it, it's good for the sport. And, um, you know, that's what it takes to do it. That's what I'm willing to do. Well, that's great. Well, I, what I want to do is go watch a clip of that right now. Some of Mark surfing in the... Uh uh, Eddie Akal, we've been watching that also as he's talking, and uh, let's go watch a clip of him from the North Shore. Then we're going to talk to him a little bit more about his surfing career, what he's going to do from here, and also about what I kind him into doing with me last year in Hawaii. Okay, we'll go to that clip right now. Hello, welcome back to Martial Arts in Malibu. If you just joined us, that was Mark Fu from the movie The North Shore. Also, uh, Mark, actually, uh, tell us about the other movie you're working on. Uh, well, actually, I think quite a few um, different movies. Um, Usually in the capacity of like a, a surfing double for somebody. I did um, uh, another one just released this summer was Aloha Summer, which was filmed in Hawaii, and I was this the, this this stunt surfing double for this guy. I think his name is Yuji Okamoto. He was the bad guy in Karate Kid too. Oh, yeah. So I was I was his uh, double, and I was another surfing double for some other cult film over here, Surf Nazis Must Die. So I think that oh, was yeah, came out of here. Right. Uh, and um, a lot of TV stuff I've done, you know, stunt work for Magnum and right. a lot of the TV series. So. Um, but basically everything I, you know, I do is surfing oriented. Like, 
Um, I remember he used to drag me to all the kung fu movies and try to walk around me because try to <laughs> pretend like I was Bruce Lee or something. But I yeah, wait, actually, wait, wait, let me let me kid him about this. See, uh, Mar Mark uh, just recently I always kid him about uh, you know looking like Bruce Lee or looking like the real martial artist, but he, he's uh, really a surfer. But you actually ran into some guys. And uh, they and you not really knowing the martial arts, they wanted you to actually be in some martial arts in Hong Kong. Or where was that? Yeah, that was uh, you know the Shaw Brothers, which they made all those Hong Kong martial arts movies. And they um, one of the other stars had seen me somewhere and grabbed me because like you know I had the right look for them, and I guess the athletic abilities. And I said, well, I don't speak the language and I don't you know not, don't know the martial arts. But they said none of the other guys really do anyways. They train them all. Um, but you know, like I said, that's not my ambition to be a uh, Kung Fu movie star, so, you know, I turned that down because there's no surf in Hong Kong. Right. <laughs> well, actually, like I was saying, Mark, is a, he is really a celebrity in Hawaii, and I'm fortunate enough when I go over there, I, he uh, puts up with me, or puts me up, put it that way, and uh, he really is famous over there. And last year, um, my master uh, from Japan actually brought 70 people to Hawaii, and we uh, took 50 people from the United States. We did a big exhibition. It was actually in honor of uh, the space shuttles, one of the space shuttle astronauts that uh, tragically died. Um, and he's buried there, and uh, it was like an honor sort of exhibition for him. And uh, we wanted to do something with me in the kickboxing realm. And Mark, being as famous as he is, I conned him into kickboxing with me. And uh, he had never really trained this way before, and we worked out a little bit. And I just want to thank you for doing that, Mark. That was a great thing. No, I really enjoy it. I love the sparring. That's, you know, I mean, if, if, if taking martial arts was like that, I would do it all the time because that's, it's so much fun, you know, but especially with the, the, the headgear and the padding and stuff, but uh, that was a ball. I'd love to do it again. You don't like to fight. You just, you just like the sparring part. No, I'm not that into fighting, you know, like, I'm not into arguing or I have, I like to think I'm, no, I'm not into fighting. Okay, good. <laughs> but you don't have to be, believe me. It's for self-defense. But anyway, I really appreciate Mark uh, stopping by. He's really got a busy schedule. Like I said, he's going to Peru. And, uh, and where are you going after that? Uh, I'm going to be stopping in Florida uh, for my couple of my endorsements, Beach Town Clothing and Freestyle Watches. Um, they're, we're putting on a, a high school championship in Florida, so I got to stop in there and you know, we talk to the kids and help them run the contest. It's, it's a re you know real big event, so I'll stop there on the way back and then start heading home and try to do some more traveling this summer and look for some more winter. But um, so, you know, he was talking about me being famous. Uh, he's really famous too, especially back there in Florida. He's, I mean, he's famous as two guys because he's got another name. He's also known as Joe Buck. And I noticed that in California, they don't know him as Joe Buck. I think you at least, des you know, should explain how you got the name Joe Buck. It's too long of a story. It's, it's a surfing nickname, actually. You know. We won't go into that. But anyway, Mark, I want to thank you for being on the show. And um, also, um, we're going to close out here. I'm going to show a little bit of a final I had at. Um, uh, my self-defense class I teach up at Pepperdine I had about 30 girls actually in the class there learning self-defense uh, in case one day you know they're ever accosted or something. And um, Is you having that class tonight? No, it's over. You missed it. We're watching the final right now. I'll let you watch the final with me, and then we're gonna come back and I'm uh, I'm uh, say goodbye to Mark.